Is there any old business? Committee or organization reports? Mrs. Slacks. Okay, so bear with me. I apologize. Um, it's going to be a long one. Community programs had our first meeting of the year on October 13th. I'm happy to report it was a great meeting. We had a very nice turnout. Uh, this committee has been very helpful over the past few years um, in really actually changing the shape of community programs. Um, Lou, Scott do an excellent job. And what's really nice to see is the community um, programs advisory committee have actually come up with some suggestions that have now been incorporated into the way that we do things to make it even better. Um, especially since we have some parents on the committee, it's nice because I think they feel very heard. So a couple of highlights would be um, the digital use, uh, the digital programming now of our occasional use booklets. Uh, for any of you who have tried to do um, one time before or after care and you're carrying around your coupon booklets, we've had issues in the past where people have lost those, couldn't find them, they had to come tracking them down. Now everything is done digitally, which will make things a lot easier for the parents. That was a big, big um, push um, for the advisory committee, and that was something that's been done this year that's been going over very well. Our early morning program um, has a 10% enrollment increase. Um, we have 588 students enrolled in that, um, and 655 in the Ask and Encore. And with that digital uh, coupon book that I talked about, it's 181 occasional users. Um, our Early Learning Academy is still running uh, very successfully. There are 111 students currently. We are in four schools. There are two full-day classrooms in Memorial, one in Chittick. Um, we have um, two half-day classes at Lawrencebrook and one half-day at Frost. All of them currently are full and with waiting lists um, with the exception of a couple of spots left in Chittick. So if you do want your child in full day at Chittick, um, you can get off a waiting list in one of the other schools and actually um, take up one of those spots and they have some terrific staff there as well. This year, uh, community programs uh, staff uh, did professional development training. So we're used to hearing that with <coughs> um, educational staff members, but they were training, trained in CPR, AED, and CPI training. Um, they're also doing out-of-school time skill workshops, and all of our new staff are participating in new hire workshops. Um, something else that uh, Scott has done the past few years is he's been surveying the parents to see what they like about the programs. And they've been overwhelmingly positive, which is really nice to hear. So um, 153 students in the early morning program responded to the survey. Um, I'll give you the highlights. Anyone that wants more of the information, please come see me. But safety in the program, 96%. Um, level of care, 95% favorable. Parents impression, favorable, 97%. Um, on the other side, the Ask Encore for the after school, we had 187 responses, which is about 25% sample. Safety, 96%. Um, level of care, 92%. Parents impression, uh, 96%. For our Early Learning Academy, um, again, 97% favorable, 94% talking about level of care, preparedness for kindergarten. Um, so everything has been um, very nice to see. The programs are moving along nicely, and it, it seems as if the parents and the students are both equally happy. A couple of recommendations that we talked about at the end of the meeting. The top two goals would be the training of staff and the improved communication with our stakeholders. Um, one of the things that people had asked for, which we've actually done, but we talked about tweaking, was um, back to school nights. And one of the thoughts was that because parents have to go to a back to school night, doing something maybe early before so they can actually just have one day out of um, <coughs> babysitting. Um, another one was to publish the enrichment calendars, which are, everything is available online, but they will talk about, we've talked about trying to be more pro proactive and letting people know what's happening for the year. And then the last thing would be community program staff working closely with the elementary instructional coaches to provide consistency and training regarding their character programs. And actually, I lied. One more thing. The last <laughs> thing is, sorry about that. The last thing is um, the shift in times. We always talk about the congestion in a lot of our elementary parking lots and the four schools that have the Early Learning Academy program in it. This year, the program was shifted, the start time is staggered so that the children are getting out about 20 minutes before the elementary students and that's been a big help from what I've heard in the schools that they're there because those parents are now generally out of the parking lot before your uh, K through 5 students are being picked up. So great job. That was another um, 
suggestion of the advisory committee that was taken and uh, has been received very well by the community. Great. So that's my report. Questions? Uh, any other committees? Mr. Simmons. Strategic planning, as we've mentioned at a few meetings, um, has already started its work this past week. I think most subcommittees have already met. And I'm going to try to remember them. We have um, facilities. We have school logistics. We have curriculum and instruction. We have extracurricular we've talked about. I'm missing two of them. Community relations. Community relations. And I'm still missing. Nutrition. 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 There you go. <laughs> Our chair of nutrition right there. Um, most of us are chairing a committee. A couple of us are not. Um, Dr. Cohen and I are not chairing a committee. Um, Security has been taken off because that is, as I understand, a closed session item. So that was uh, moved. So sorry, Mrs. Lax. But other than that, everybody else seems to have one. But um, like I said, we're, we're started already. We have, we're, we're starting to shape the kinds of issues that we're going to see, the kinds of input that we need, the folks that we're going to want to get input from. And that's going to, as we've mentioned before, it's going to include board members. It's going to include staff. Most importantly, community members and hopefully some kids will come in and at selected intervals when we uh, kind of approach different issues. So it's cool. We're going in the right direction. Great. Uh, on October 19th, the Student Services Committee uh, met. Must have been a busy week for you, Mr. Figueroa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to uh, pass along the dais, and I also put a few copies over on uh, the table where the agendas are. Uh, we had a presentation by uh, Dr. Judith R. Harrison, who is from Rutgers University, and it is a program that they are conducting in uh, in East Brunswick and with the advisement of uh, Sharon Weber Oleskevich and other members of the special education staff. Um, it was a fascinating uh, presentation from Dr. Harrison on developing compensatory strategies for ADHD students. Um, we also had uh, some highlights of the um, Disability Awareness Fair that was held at East Brunswick Public Library on Sunday. Um, the fair was held at the library and it uh, had vendors and organizational representation. There was also a, a keynote address given by uh, some authors who have written books about uh, raising a child with special needs. We certainly want to give thanks to uh, Sharon Oleskevich again, as well as Audrey Wiener and the Learning Disabilities Association of New Jersey, who co-sponsored the event. Um, Danielle Blaylock also gave reports on some new initiatives at the elementary schools, mentioning that mentorships are now available in all of the uh, elementaries. There is also an Everyday Heroes program being conducted in the elementary schools as well. She did give us a, a review of the Week of Respect, and she also told us a little bit about a new program called the Senior Seminar, um, which was held while sophomores and juniors were testing, and it allowed uh, our staff in uh, student services to spend four hours with our seniors uh, going over issues that are important to them. As you can imagine, uh, quite a bit of it was related to the uh, application to colleges and universities. <coughs> but uh, anyway, it's, uh, I think, a, a, a positive introduction to allowing seniors to <coughs> understand that, you know, we're we're not just kicking them out the door. We're going to really try to provide the supports that they need to be successful. And finally, we uh, had a little uh, refreshment as we <coughs> celebrated the careers of uh, Sharon Oleskevich as well as Dr. Susan McClune. Uh, as their days are numbered, I won't say that they're counting down the days because I don't really <coughs> believe that's true. But anyway, it was uh, an excellent meeting. And again, I thank our uh, committee membership for <coughs> spending the time with us on Monday evening. Thank you. Mr. McAvoy. Technology Committee met <laughs> the other, <coughs> I guess, Tuesday, Tuesday night. Um, 
there were some notable people missing, I'm sure, because of not feeling up to par with the – I myself am having a little bit of a struggle, but uh, Mr. Leipold, uh, Mrs. Becker, and myself, we discussed uh, a number of things, and uh, Mr. Leipold really led the charge where he reviewed a number of applications that are now up and running, which include but are not limited to – uh, the retooling of our website, which we hope to see sometime in and around January 1st. <clears throat> and I'm just going to read through these and not go into any detail on anything, but Business Plus, our online parent conferencing uh, scheduling, which we hope to see filtered down to the uh, grammar schools so that uh, it makes it real easy to get away from the phone call to the secretary and you finding the, I said I wasn't going to do this, the busy signal, the busy signal, the busy signal. So we're trying to do so many different things in technology, and it really is so exciting. Um, but again, back applications, but not limited to uh, ASOP, uh, teacher evaluation, and special ed software programs. Um, Mr. Leipold talked about future projects being um, an increase uh, or an examination of and an increase of uh, firewall services as well as filtering applications, and he updated us on the BYOD progress at, uh, at the high school. And uh, finally, I've, I've uh, received from Mr. Leipold an updated uh, chart from the Sonera report. I don't know that, it, that it's on our shared documents, but if it's not on our shared documents, it is a 10, 12-page document that Mr. Leipold put out, very comprehensive. He looked at every suggestion that uh, was made under that report, <coughs> and then he has where he is on the status with regard to rectifying, uh, changing, uh, correcting, and even some of his uh, professional uh, advice on things that maybe we don't even have to do. So I have this. I can surrender this to Mr. Krochfeld or Dr. Valeski, or you can just you know, get it to us via the, the hard copy photocopies, however you want to do it, so that all of us can see sure this. Drive. I have a copy, Mr. McAvoy, so we'll put it up on the Google Drive. The okay. Sure drive. And uh, that covers everything. Uh, right, Mrs. Becker? It was an awesome meeting. There we go. It's exciting, all the new stuff. Thank you, Dr. Cohen. Thank you. Is that for it for committee reports?